Hello, everybody. What's going on? It's your boy, Sean, here. You're surviving with Sean. I don't even know what we call this podcast thing yet, but it is what it is. I have with me the one and only Zach Graveson. Is that right? Do I say Gra- Graveson? Is that right? Graveson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. I didn't know if it was like Graveson, and like I kept them spelling it wrong. I put Gravy Son, and I was like, that's... I've heard Gravenson. A lot of people, French people put it N. I don't know why. Gravenson. Yeah, <laughs> Zach Graveson. Zach with an H, Graveson. Okay. Jack with an H, Graveson. Okay. Um, Zach, why don't you tell us a little about who you are, what you're doing, uh, kind of give us a little bit of your run. I'll throw some questions in there. We'll see where this baby goes. Good? Who I am? Um, well, I know, I'm big a question. BU Sorry. alum now. Oh, you're a BU, a BU alum. alum now. Yeah, okay. it's official. I'm out the bubble. You're out the bubble. Where are you living now? Yeah. Now I'm in Montreal, Cartierville. So in quarantine is what you're saying. Yep, in a little three and a half. This is one room, me and these four walls since oh, wow. uh, since I got back in Mexico. So, oh, when, when when were you in Mexico? So, I, every, so everything blew up while I was back in Mexico. So, so you it looked like be... a movie. Because oh. when I left, Corona was like a thing, but it didn't blow up yet, especially not in North America. Okay. But now, as I left, people start buying toilet paper. All I see is toilet paper on Instagram and everywhere. And okay. after that, I see people are like are panicking in the shopping malls and all that, and they're like, "It's like it was like the apocalypse." And I'm, <laughs> I was confused because back in Mexico, it was spring break, you know. Okay. I didn't explode like that, so we were we were chilling. It was good, but then after that, when we got back in the airport, everybody has the masks, pure all the time, and then yeah, it, when I got back, it was different. So was then different. you went on, so you're on like this. Well, we're all quarantined anyways, but you're like on a 14 day bender, you know, is that, is that what you Yeah. Mean? So mine was supposed to end this Monday. Okay. So I was looking forward to tomorrow, but now I guess it's a, uh, it's going to be like a month, month and a half. Who knows? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we're going to be under some kind of like semi, I call it semi quarantine because we're still allowed to go and get, we still can go get stuff, but we just, no, no big meeting. Okay, I'm gonna yawn a lot during this. It doesn't mean you're boring. It's just like I don't have a good. <laughs> it's I all good. I don't breathe. It's well, all good. So I gotta keep breathing. Okay, so you got. So you heard spring break. Yeah. So I'm not asking I any questions. To, I'm not asking any questions. But yeah, I won't go there. What happened <laughs> uh, in Cancun? We'll stay in Cancun. All right. Okay. But uh, no, it, it was good. But like, I left for two weeks. So first week, I went to visit my dad, who moved to Mexico during the winter now. Okay. And uh, then second week, I met up with some friends, and it was like kind of a grad trip, you know, school's done. And uh, at first, it was fine. But then my first week, there wasn't a big, big thing. But then middle of the second week, that's when things really blew up. And then the people, like, were all hearing about their schools shutting down. And then uh, I was actually starting to get worried, like, are we going to be able to get back? Okay. Crazy. Yeah, I know, man. It's been pretty intense up here. I know, at least I know that. But did you, is your dad moving back already or is he staying down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, he came back. He was supposed to come back only like end of March. Okay. But yeah, he's back already. And uh, he had the whole kit. He had the mask, the gloves, everything. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. it's kind of fun, interesting to watch this thing go down because you got people on like all, all camps and then you got people who are a part of the camp but are hypocritical on the other side. Like they'll be like, yo, I'm totally, yeah, it's coronavirus. You got to watch what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like out going to a party. Or like going to a park or to hang out with like yeah, and I understand for people who are like like do you live with anybody? Uh, actually, I used to I had someone living with me, but because I was coming back from a trip, at first I was supposed to be quarantined alone, but now okay. it happens everybody is, so that's why uh, he went back to Ottawa. Okay, so, so he's working like, from home too. So you're like in isolation and quarantine. It, it's been me against the world, man. It's Yo. been uh, just me and my thoughts, but you know what? It's it's been productive. Oh, for sure. People, people have to use this time. It's, it's been good. I'm going to come out of this stronger. I'm going to come out of this better. I'm going to be ready. Okay. So, like, so tell me what you're thinking about. What are you doing with your thoughts? Like, so, well, one, where do you work? Do you, like, do you have a job? Yeah, yeah I work for, uh, so I'm a technical recruiter in finance. Okay. So I help, the way I like to put it is I help people advance in their career, take that next step. Okay. So me, I'm focused in finance, so like accountants and all that. Okay. And now with everything going on now, now it's pretty crazy because everybody's at home. Everybody's on temporary layoff. No one knows. Like, mm-hmm. There's going to be restructuring. When all this ends, mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of companies restructuring. And uh, yeah, it's going to change a lot. So, so yeah, well, I work, but at least I get to work from home. So it keeps me busy. 
you know, for sure. Cause you know, like I think when we come back, we're going to have a lot of companies are going to cut off the fat that they had. They're going to have to. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of stuff. companies are closing too. You know, like a lot of them were not doing so well. And now it's just, now that was just like, mm. so you think, the, you think the, the employment market's going to like change, like the landscape's going to change. You think we're going to have less of jobs, you think have more of jobs. What do you think is going to happen? Look, I'm not a, you know, I've only been doing this for three months, but just your opinion. If, if you're asking me my best guess, I'm thinking that there's going to be one thing that's going to change for sure is there's going to be a lot more working from home. Okay. If it's not that people are like, are going to be a lot more flexible and obviously we're going to get better at it because yeah. now anybody who can is doing it. So company is going to get better at working from home and that's going to be different. You know, having a cough now, it's going to be just go work from home. It's not take a chance. Mm-hmm. And that things like that are going to change. But I do expect as soon as this all ends, because we don't know when, but there's a moment where the government's going to be officially like, all right, we're good. We can return to like normal life because it's not just going to be from quarantine to nothing. It's going to be gradual. Okay. But once it's officially, we're back to normal. Then there's going to be a huge spike in hiring for sure. Do you, but, think, do you think the government will even will relinquish their power that they have right now? I heard, I was listening to a podcast today. And they started talking about that. And that's true. Like the moment you touch that kind of authority where you can keep people locked in their houses, that's, that might be hard to let go. Every, a lot of things are going to change. Yeah. Culture's well, going to change. That was the thing I just thought about the most. Like I was kind of like, Hey, uh, like why would like, like, you know, like when governments get more money, they stay, what the heck's going on here? Where's my zoom? There we go. Um, like when governments get power, they have a tendency to, or well, they get money. They don't have a tendency to give that money back when they have a surplus. They act, well, they say they give it back, but they give it back the way they want to give it back, which is another form of not giving it back because they didn't give it back in the same form in which they received it. So if you got a whole bunch of money from taxes, what they'll do is give you the money back with a tax gift or, or some kind of association where they're still in control of this. So it's not even a gift. It's more of a, a, another form of imprisonment. So, like to the to the the money. I'm not a super conspiracy theory here, but I'm just thinking, like they're yeah, gonna. I would have all- love to hear that conversation. Is that up? Is that on the your page? The conversation you had with your brother yesterday. Oh yeah, it's, it's but it's, really, it's not up yet. That's not going up for a couple of weeks, but uh, probably two. Oh, okay, weeks. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna be listening to that. I'm curious to see where you guys went. Well, we he talked. He took the, the idea of well. Let me finish this last part. And I'll get right back to that. Yeah. yeah. So he so the government touches that new power, right? They get that that feel of it. And it's going to feel good because everyone, all of a sudden, everyone's paying attention to politics again. We weren't doing that in Canada. We were kind of like, this is stupid. Justin Trudeau is doing his thing, whatever. And, you know, whether you liked it, you didn't like it, whatever, that's your own deal. But then now they all have this power. But you're also seeing how each province deals with the situation differently. Like Quebec has been like on point. I was like, whoa, they've been on point. Now, mind you, again, I'm not a big fan of politics. And I say that because I feel like we pay a lot of money for people to do, to be slow at their job. And often the perspective is that we work for them, but really we are their boss. We're the one, they, we put them in that position to represent us to do these other things, these other things that are at our best mm-hmm. interest. Um, yep. And they're like approaching martial law a little bit, pretty close, at least I think. So that, that puts a little, that doesn't, make me think conspiracy theory about coronavirus. Not at all. That makes me think, okay, what is the government going to do once we're done this part? And if and when we're done, will they go back to the way it was before? Or will they always have this power saying, okay, quarantine, everyone gone. And so, I mean, I talked to my brother and I said, like last night about his whole like conspiracy theory. I said, well, listen, Brent, I don't think conspiracy on the, on, about coronavirus. The reason I don't think is that they literally shut everything down. That's a money, a money generator and you don't mess with money. You just don't do it. So why would you cut down? Why would you, why would you cut the NFL? Why would you cut the, cut the NHL? Why would you cut the potentially the CFL? Why would you cut all these leagues across, not just our country, not just across North America, but across like everywhere, everything shut down. Uh, and I was like, no one wants to shut down because they understand what happens like massive media crash, like massive stock crashing, all kinds of stuff happening. So why would you want to shut that down? Mm-hmm. 
you wouldn't want to shut down something that's becoming like a bit of a cash cow where it's just moving on. It might be moving on slow, but it's still moving on and moving on up. And then comes a big collapse. And so I said, so that's, so that was my thing about coronavirus. I'm like, I don't think this is like a, like if you're trying to wipe out a population, you would have already set up. Like that was his thing. He thinks that people are trying to wipe population control. I said, if you're trying to do that, you would have already set up other manufacturing elsewhere, but everything shut down. Um, and then I said, more so, it's scary. Is it like you'll know we're in a pandemic? He's what he was saying, like a like a full deal, full bad, when they close construction. And I've heard that kind of just whispered in the in the shadows. When construction goes, this bad boy is really hit, because construction people make a lot of money. Don't don't get it twisted. And they're probably one of the higher higher paid businesses. Period. And they foot the bill for a lot of the EI because they invest so much into it because they have to, because of unions and all of that stuff. Right. So if construction goes, everything goes, that's where it goes down to. And this is coming from the fact that um, Quebec is like one of the, is, is a producer of steel and they're still producing steel right now. Is that essential that we have steel right now? And then my brother, he's a, he's an iron worker and he's still working and they're not giving them any kind of protocol on how to like stay six, six meters away from people. He's like, you'll be lucky to find Purell in any of the, the bathrooms or any of the outhouses. He's like, and nobody's, nobody's wearing masks. Nobody's doing anything. And he's working, you know, 10, 12 hour days outside. What? Yeah. How big is this company? Like how many employees? Well, it'd be across the country. I mean, they do all they do all like the dams and stuff like that. They did, they've just finished the Amazon. But like deal. he's around a lot of people. All the time, 120 workers, easy, on a daily basis. So you That's multiply, that out, you extrapolate that out. Like let's just say they're around two people, and you do that twice. So you go two people times two people times two people. How many people you've already touched? How many circles have you already influenced? And then you already see how fast this this virus spreads. Um, boom, it's there. Uh, for sure. It's, so that's his whole thing against the, like, that. It's a conspiracy that whatever, cause he's still at work. He's like, how am I essential? Like I'm right now they're currently building a student housing building. How is that essential in this time when everything is being shut down? When we're all trying to not spread the disease too rapidly so that the health system can keep up with it. So I, I was like, I don't have the answer to that one. <laughs> well, I know why. I was just like, and he yeah. was just going off. But I, I was like, right, like, okay, full on conspiracy, a little bit. Like, he's like, yeah, yeah, we created yeah, the virus, yeah. we threw it out. I'm like, I'm not sure if we have the capacity. And if it was a big conspiracy like that, that's around the world. I don't think Quebec would be a major role player in all that. You know? No. Well, then his argument, his argument would probably be, well, they got to make it believable so everybody's got to buy in, right? That's what he would say. Yeah, but down to the province. Eh. No. But, I, I, I like, and he was, he's, he was all like, China didn't create this disease. I'm like, <laughs> I laughed. I'm like, Brent, they're responsible for like four major coronaviruses. Responsible. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, I'm trying to explain to him how the food markets work there, how the, like. Yes, exactly. They eat everything. They eat everything. But it's not even just that they eat everything. It's how it's, it's how it's stored. Like here in Canada, we have like regulations in States. We have regulations on how meat and products are stored. You cannot just like, for example, you couldn't stamp like stack a slab of pork on top of a slab of beef. Even if it was dead, you couldn't do that. You would not be able mm -hmm. to sell that cross contamination. We would say, but these guys have like living animals standing on top of each other. One pooping down into the cage of the other and the other eating the poop. How does that like, that's already they're going to be viral. Like there's a virus coming right through it. And then at some point, there's going to be one strain that's able to pass from the animal to the human. And they call those human, uh, human, um, it's a human animal. And it just means like the virus is transported. I don't know if that's the actual correct term, but it's, uh, it's something. Didn't very... this whole thing start because a guy ate a bat? Was, isn't it like a bat? That's well, what I heard. I, it, we assume that the disease comes from bat meat. Okay. Uh, I think that's what the consensus is. And then a population that eats a high amount, well, eats anything, but eats massive amounts of it is, is China. They eat lots of bats. Like that's part of their diet. Like you can see, you can go type it in right now in the meat, in any of those food markets, the meat markets. And uh, so then you get that and like, 
it's not bad if it's one to two, like, you know, one person gets it and then another person gets it. That's okay. It's the multiplication process that's happening. One person gets it and then they spread it to three people. And then those three people spread it to 10 different people. Like it just, it's massive. Now in that process, what happened, what, at least from the common consensus is that there was cases of Corona already coming up. And then they had some like big family event in Wuhan where 5 million people got together. Jeez, that's quite the family event. <laughs> right. So like, like just like, I guess, family day. Or yeah, something yeah, yeah. Like and then they all got together and they, well, now you have like 5 million potential people who get contaminated with this virus. And then they all leave. And then China, like their information they're giving out hasn't been very reliable because, you know. I was going to say, how do you feel about those numbers? Well, that's it, right? So like how reliable was, either way, how reliable is their information? Because they have people that were disappearing because that happens in China, not even just for this, but just happened. Apparently the people who like start, like the first ones who were working on this exact coronavirus disappeared mm -hmm. or something. I might be screwing this up, but I know like two of the scientists that were involved with this whole corona thing disappeared. Yeah, because they, like the they started seeing the process. I don't know if it's the first ever scientists that discovered it, but people discovered it and said, okay, there's a couple of cases here and this is kind of spreading a little fast. Um, we need to kind of this and then China because China is trying to don't this is me so call me on it I don't have very many facts about it yet but I'm, I'm just sensing it maybe more so than anything that China is trying to become a world dominated power like be the power of the world okay and they have the capacity to and they did it through manufacturing because we kept on offloading our manufacturing everywhere else so China has gotten good at making stuff yeah and making it cheap and efficient Right? Even making it cheaply and quality, they're learning how to make quality now even with cheapness because they have money to reinvest in their manufacturing and they're becoming the manufacturing hub of the world. So they become a power. Now, if you have this disease that threatens another nation just by disease, you wouldn't want anyone to know. Why? Because then you're not going to be able to export your, export your product. Your product's going to stay in the house. It's gonna, so you're not going to be producing for nothing. It was kind of like what happened with in Quebec when they stopped buying all the recycling and then recycling kind of stacked up for a while. <laughs> well, what are we going to do with it? Exactly. So yeah. China does not, did not want that to happen, but they, what they if they were, they were smart though, like let's, let's say they were vindictive. Okay. They understood what they were doing. So the disease happens, they know about it. So they try to hide it and they hide it for this reason. This is something thrown up in the air for you. You tell me what you think. So they throw it up in the air uh, for you. They, didn't they suppress the information long enough to allow it to go around so that everybody would shut down so they couldn't lose the business of manufacturing? What do you think? So you're saying that they waited for it to be contaminated pretty much everywhere so that everything was shut down, but then they're still rolling. Right, because like, like let's say the United States stays open. Okay, they don't get they don't get it. They can produce. India can yeah. produce. Uh, Malaysia can produce, Brazil can produce, like South America can produce. Yeah, so they just would have lost business. Tons. And then the relationship would have been built differently. Right? So yeah. it's like... Yeah, and they're screwing with the numbers. And that one thing that came out is all of a sudden, the amount of people whose like, cell phones plans were like canceled or like shut down compared to the amount of people who died is like an insane amount more. Okay. So you're seeing like, so people are like, shutting down like oh you're canceling your phone you're canceling all your bills are but the amount of people isn't going down isn't going down so you no, know so like i didn't even know that solid proof yeah i heard that this morning I okay that this morning but yeah that's okay i'm gonna take a look at that i'll pop that up yeah look, look at that if you can find that i heard that this morning uh on a podcast okay i check that out right now here we go file the page okay new tab no, no, I don't want to check. Okay, I want a new window. Okay, share screen. Okay. So you're going to be seeing yourself in two seconds there, bud. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to open up. Uh, I'm going here. Tab. There we go. Okay, so I am going to open up a new window. Okay, okay so you said cell phone. Let's see if we can. Something related with like the amount of cell phones going down or cell phone plans. And it like doesn't match at all the amount of like deaths that they're reporting. 
cancellation versus deaths in China. Let's see if something shows up. Okay. Is China, first thing that shows up, is China hiding the death toll? 21 million cell phones. Oh, good uh, yeah. gravy. Good. Right, let's dig in. Let's get in this rabbit hole. Good gravy. If that, okay, this is, so these uh, if people, if, you, if you're, you're not, if you're, watching, if you're not watching this, you're just listening to this. Okay, I'm not going COVID crazy, but we just, right, so apparently. <laughs> COVID crazy. <laughs> Uh, Some people are going COVID crazy, that's for sure. Oh, for sure. Okay, so here. So the death toll in China apparently is what? Um, they said that they had, okay. Okay, so there's 15,374 people dead and 351,000 uh, people kind of infected. Okay. Hold on. But recently, Beijing announced March 19th that 21 million cell phone plans were were canceled. While in the past three months, 840,000 landlines were closed in China. So I chalked the landlines up to people just getting off the curve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, yes, and so they say here in this article that uh, probably these closed numbers belong to people who died I don't, like what is these stupid ads <laughs> so stupid um okay the digitization level who's this writing oh gosh the chinese regime requires all chinese to use their cell phone to generate a health code only with the green health code are chinese allowed to move in china now it is impossible for a person to cancel his cell phone. Oh gosh, they're going that way. Oh my god, this is uh, it's pretty scary. So how many did they say millions? So so like, there you have to keep a cell phone in order to get a health like to get a health plan. So they won't be allowed to have it unless they get a code sent to them by their central government, their communist government, and then so basically they have to keep a tab on themselves that the government can have. In China, it's mandatory to install a cell phone app and register your personal health information. The app can generate a QR code, which is possible in three colors to classify a person's health condition. In the case, red means a person of an infectious disease, while yellow and green represent possibility of infectious disease with no signs of uh, such illness, respectively. Oh, my gosh. What about the 21 cell million cell phones? Okay. Announce 21? It. No way. These numbers are compared to uh, it revealed that both cell phone users and landline users dropped dramatically. So we're not sure. So this was this was just last year in December, and the disease showed up in November. This whole thing started in November. Yes, this is going to make a lot of people scared. Good night. The comparison showed that the number of cell phone users decreased from 1.6 billion to 1.5.7 billion. 1.8 billion. Good night. Whoa. Hold on to your turbines. This is going to be a bumpy ride, buddy. But like, like the number's crazy, but I mean, doesn't it make sense that China would be the most affected? You know, they're all cramped. They have, they have multiple cities of like over 5 million people. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. You know, like in the States, like other than LA and like New York, how many cities do you have that have like that many people in China? It's common. 1.8 billion people. What? I don't know what just happened here. But I am like trying to stop. I don't know. I've apparently selected a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, what is going on? Oh, that's what's happening. <laughs> I had my phone on my mouse. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I mean, China has got a gazillion people there for sure. Um, but really it's just a representation of what, if that is the case, it's a representation of what's going to happen where we are. Yeah. Like the, this is just, that's the scary thing is that every day there's more and more. So we know we're still on the wrong side of the curve. We're still going up. Yep. That's, oh, for sure. Uh, they're trying to slow it down. And then it's like that I, for me, that was part of the problem is that in the, in the beginning, um, 
like when China first had the, not the H1N1, it was the, uh, the bird flu, the Asian bird flu. They shut that thing down so quick. Like China shut its borders down and just crouched the disease inside so we didn't have to deal with it. Really? Yeah. So they didn't on this one. They were, they've no. been able to. So like this is not the first time uh, this happened. It is a coronavirus. Like it is a part of the corona family, which is the same family as the common cold. But uh, it is what it is. So we got to figure it out. Some people are going to die. Now, you have to take that, those numbers, the grain of salt, number one. Number two, um, health plays a big role in your survival rate over this particular uh, virus. So if you, like Chinese people have a high tendency of being smokers. And aged men over 70 that are smokers have, low, have a lower expect- survival expectancy. Look, right now, all we have to do is, I'll steal a line from uh, Coach Sheriff back at Bishops, but just, like, do your job. Like, play your role. Stay yeah. home and, like, be healthy. Like, stay home and take care of yourself. Yep. Don't stay home and go crazy. Well, Don't it. stay home and, like, not exercise and not take care and eat junk. And, you know, like, for me, I saw it as God told everybody, go in your room and think about what you've done. <laughs> and a lot of people, for me, like, I looked at myself. Who am I? Where am I going? What's the plan? Am I moving towards that plan? Mm. If not, why the hell not? Mm. You know, I've been doing a lot of, I started writing, asking those questions and it helps a lot. It does. Cause I think that uh, we, we get to reflect a little more about like, again, what is, what, what is valuable what's important. What's important and what's important. And, you know, right now I'm also thinking about my boat. I'm not gonna lie to you. I let my boat go. <laughs> so my boat went into like, into repair, like, uh, I don't know, probably, uh, like late January, maybe early February around there. I can't particularly say. I don't remember totally. Maybe it was mid, maybe mid February, because they had gotten my windshield in. So I took my windshield, my boat, my boat over to get the windshield, and they got the wrong side. It's like oh my gosh, it takes like it takes, it takes eight to twelve weeks to get it in the first place. And, yeah. So they did, and then like the next day, I, I messaged them like, hey, so have you guys figured anything out with the blah blah blah? And they're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're, we've already ordered the other part. We'll let you know when it happens. And then all of a sudden, like the whole Corona thing happens. So now I have my boat just sitting over at some <laughs> marina, and I can't even, like, I can't get it annoyed right now. And like, I have to install some stuff on it. And... <sighs> yeah, like, there's the obvious things that you miss, like, like you know, just being outside, like people. I miss yeah. people. Yeah, you know, oh, I miss the sure. homies. I miss the people at work. You know. Yep. Yeah. And um, but there's other small things like. I was going to the grocery store and it was my first time. It was like my, my second time out since I got back. So in the last two weeks and it's on the same route to go to work. And I was just listening to music, and especially now that's warmer outside. I was listening to music. Window was down a bit. I was just driving. I was like, man, I miss driving. I, mm-hmm. I miss driving and just listening to a good song. And then just being like, you know, in a good mood going somewhere, you know, I was just taking care of stuff You know, I was going to get some food, cook for the week, you know, and I miss it. It's a little things like that, mm-hmm. but things going to change after. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna my be... family, at family ruins, we kiss on the cheeks. Is that still going to be a thing? I was talking right. to my dad. He brought that up. Is that still going to be a thing? I don't know. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's going to be part of our, our it's still part of our new normal because it's, it's a cultural thing. So it might take, it's probably going to take at least one or two generations to do that because I think that maybe the kissing on the cheek has kind of declined over the last, let's say, 40 years. Okay. Yeah. So from the last generation to this generation, it's declined. And it's declining again, right? Because it's maybe not socially appropriate because people have used it for other means or whatever. Um, I meet lots of French people now and I don't kiss them on the cheek or whatever. But my family, I do. Like, and it's like male, yeah. female. Yeah, yeah. There's female, a lot of female, right? touching is going to become a lot more personal. For sure. Um, you know? It's a lot at risk. But I think that was the way in the beginning anyways. No one realized that. Like, let's be real, okay? So how many people are having sex like wild idiots? Lots of people, right? And the same things could show up that were life affecting, could get anything. And we, what we were That's telling true. people is like, we were telling people we were, what was being taught through the schools, through the government agencies is that, hey, sex is okay, which it is. And then they would, they, the boundaries that they put were like, you should just experience. So they put no boundaries on it and they were promoting this idea. So now you'd say to somebody who you've been promoting, do what, do what feels good for you, do what feels good for you, do what feels good for you, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the message switches, saying, now don't go outside, do this for everybody else. 
make sure that your actions don't mm -hmm. jeopardize somebody else. All of a sudden, this new message came out. And they're wondering why we're having a lot, of, like the day that we were supposed to be all quarantined because I had to cancel a big event that I had put on and it was, like, it was going to be successful. For, the, for a first time event, it was going to be successful. I was like, whoa, okay, this is going to work. I don't know how the money came in, everything. I had to like refund lots of thousands of dollars. It was just not fun, but it was what it is. And um, like I personally didn't have to do the refunding. Our organization had to do that. Um, and I saw young people. St I'm like, they're going to think they're invisible to invincible to this, which we are. Mm -hmm. Like, which they essentially kind of are, because their immune system hasn't tired out yet. But one thing that's crazy too is 60 percent of people are asymptomatic. They yeah. might have it, but they're not showing any cough or symptoms or anything. So though they thought that those are the dangerous people. Well, like not for you. Like you might be good, but again, do your part. Exactly, because that's not like, safe for everybody. Fine, like, but well, you get that. You go on kickoff return or kickoff cover. You do your part. You you do you. You're yeah. okay about you, but you might not do your part. You be you'll do what's okay for you, but you might not do your part. And because you didn't do your part, some ne next person just got worked over. Because exactly. you didn't do your part. Now, Don't if you've done selfish. your part, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have got like Wally bucks, but you know, you might have a different outcome. Yeah. Like, and, and we're asking you to do the thing you do when you want to get away, when you want to relax. We're telling yeah. you exactly that. Just stay home, do your thing, do whatever you want. If you have to work, work, yeah. but if you don't have to do your thing, it's easy. Well, I, like, by the way, I'm probably going to post this podcast tomorrow just cause it's a good one. Okay. <laughs> but like here, yeah, it's not relevant because who knows in two weeks this whole corona thing's gonna be we could who be who knows where it's gonna be it could be have you seen the movie the road with uh val morgan the guy who plays uh the king in uh lord of the rings like the one that's coming back the the he also plays in american history uh, x but do you know who i'm talking about the guy who gets the chick at the american end american history x uh, sorry, one? is it American History X? No, it's not American. Uh, is it Amer it's a American story or so. I don't know. He's like a Family Guy. And he's actually an assassin or something like this. And then he's like just trying to live a family life, and these people try to kill him, and he just works over these people. Um, Val Morganson, I think his name is. Let me check that up here. I'll show you who I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, the face. I'll probably recognize the face. Okay, sure. Here we go. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go this way. No, I haven't seen the road, but I saw. Uh, I started watching five minutes of Contagion. Okay. Five minutes. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not. Trying to I'm not it's too much right now. No, I'm. I've been filling my my mind with happy thoughts. That's happy it. Stuff. I don't. I don't need to. I don't follow the news. I just do my job. I just do my part. Whatever I can do to contribute, I'll do that. I don't need to hear about all the negative stuff going on. People being stupid. Trump yeah. running his mouth. Sorry no for that. that. I don't know what that is, but there we go. Some stupid ad. Okay. Lord of the Rings uh, actors. Let's put actors here. By the way, I'm learning this Zoom thing. I'm loving every second of it. Okay. Uh, this guy right here, Vigo Mortensen. He looks old there, though. Does this face ring a bell to you? I mean, it's I'm on, I'm on my phone, so it's okay. Yeah, 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 this yeah. Is he the actor? Yeah, yeah, that guy. No, so he he's in the road. Yeah, he's in the road, and it's like a, an apocalyptic movie, and it is just it is something fierce, buddy. Wouldn't suggest watching it if I were you. <laughs> Would not suggest watching that one. Uh, it shows off the worst of humans in in some kind of dire situations, which you've already kind of seen a microcosm at the grocery store, but still. Well, yeah, that's one, that's one thing I was seeing. Like while I was in Mexico, that's why it seemed fake. It was almost like people on black Friday. When you see those videos of them, like you saw like the pallet of uh, toilet paper coming, everybody was ripping it from each other. Like what, what's with the toilet paper? I didn't, I, I, I was back in Mexico. Like, what the, what is going on? But I don't understand the toilet paper. This is not a, this, this doesn't cost diarrhea. Yeah. Like I could get pure out. I understand that. And you can make a makeshift bidet with your shower. Let's be real. Okay. If, if all things that's you yeah. running for that, I'm not running. I'm running for food. At the end of the day, I'm running for food. If I was really, to, yeah. if I really had to worry about something. I'd be running for food, but, but not milk, but you see people buying milk in bulk. What? How much milk are you going to drink? That goes bad. You can't exactly. Eat. That's what I'm saying. And it's milk. Who cares? People are, it's, I don't get it. I don't get it. 
like with what was scaring me the most while I was still like abroad and everything was going on was was like okay there's the virus but the paranoia is getting crazy I feel like now it's kind of settled everybody's locked locked in their house I feel like now people are starting to see like they're appreciating more you know spend time with family they're doing their thing mm. but the paranoia at first was just wild mm. oh for sure the paranoia was like out of control and uh, I yeah uh, they just need to get it together is what they need to do get this thing together figure out like we've never we've never this has never happened before yeah so, you for know, sure like, yeah give, give give credit to everybody uh involved in solving this problem because there's no uh there's no precedent no for sure it isn't like, I, I don't know but i like i could get i kind of get just like yo listen if we're in for the long haul. Like, I really hope we're not stuck like this till December. Let me tell you, I'll probably go crazy at that point. I mean, my summer, man. The summer, you can't, you can't take the summer away. You can't give us back-to-back winners. No. I imagine back-to-back winners of freedom. That would be the worst. Oh. Mind you, at that point, it would be like a cake to a fat person. You would just take whatever flavor they gave. Oh, yeah. At that point, I just want to be outside. I just want to see people. Yeah. Well, and that, that's like... But- we don't see the effect right now. We're trying to save the, at the expense of the social, um, at the expense of the social uh, repercussions that we're going to have. So from our social health, that's going to go down the tubes. Like out of our physical health, will should be able to rebound, right? But what is yeah. what are the damages going to be left behind of all of this isolation? I think something good's going to come yeah. up too, though. I think people are going to learn to have the have their own opinions. Actually, I think we have two people. We're going to have people who want to listen to the like listen to the government or the authorities for their opinions, and there's going to be people like yourself, myself, that are going to have their own opinions and stick to those guns, right? Because you're going to you at some point you're going to realize, okay, you know what? Those are just people, and they're full of crap too sometimes. So why am I why am I giving my 100 percent to those people, and they don't seem reasonable in their next move? Exactly. And that's the same way, like, the, like you said, there's going to be two types of people coming out of this. There's going to be those who use this time to just, they press, like pause, they just waited. They just didn't do anything, but you know, just watch the Netflix, they just, like relax, relax, put everything on pause. And when things start going again, well, then they just get back into the routines into the same old thing. Mm-hmm. But then there's other people that are at home right now and I'm part of them. I'm sure you're part of them. And there's a lot of people that that's part of that group that are just thinking right now, like, okay, I'm like, we're going, we're, we're pressing pause for now, but am I going where I want to be? Like, do I want to go back to that? Cause normal life is going to come back. We don't know when, but the normal life is going to come back. So what you were doing, is that really what you want to go back to? Now you have time to like figure things out. Yeah. You don't have any pressure really to do something else. Like I've been telling people like, like every night I've been doing like, a Facebook live, like almost like I'm, it's pretty much turning into a radio show. I just letting it do its own thing. Um, and I've realized that people don't want to, like some people will just have questions with me and talk a bit, but most people are checking in for a, a different form of entertainment that they haven't had in a while. So we I need like, oh. that right now. And so I was like, okay, so I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start shifting a little bit over to that side and, and that thing, you know, and, and it's interesting. Cause like, you know, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm a Christian. So I have my faith element that I've got in this and I'm, and my, my Bible's telling me not to fear that God is in control. And I'm like, my goodness, I know. But, and all I want to say every time is, yeah, but do you see what's happening? Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. And, and people think because like I'm a Christian that like, I don't have these questions or I'm not like, I'm not struggling with this thing either, but I'm not losing my mind at home. And I'm like, I want to run outside right now. Crazy. Of course I am. And like normal is going to be different when we come out of this thing. And you, not that I want to say. Normal won't be the new normal for sure. No, it'll be totally different. And like you yeah. said, you have this time to develop your thoughts, think about what you really want to do. And exactly. what is it like the thing that you miss most when you, when you go in, like, what is it? And what is the thing that you learned when you went into the dark? Cause you've been in a dark place before mentally, physically, We've all been, everybody. spiritually, whatever. We've all been there have to be. And you come out different. Like some people like throw abandon their whole spiritual side of themselves, which I think is a bad thing, but they do their own thing. Then there's people who like physically, they go into the toilet. I've gone into the toilet a couple of times physically. I don't like it much. So I stay out of that toilet. Um, and then like emotionally, like, where are you on that one? Cause it, it will take a toll on your mind. 
like the person I have the most discussion with, and that's probably why I've been doing these podcasts and radio shows is because like I'm talking to my wife every day. Now I know you, well, you don't want to talk to your wife every day. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I love her to death. Okay. I do. I really do. But when you're 24 hours, same person, the conversation can become very cyclical, right? So in, in order to break that cycle, I didn't realize I have to talk to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I got the worst and the best right now because I am what we call an introvert extrovert. I love people and I dislike being around people at the same time. <laughs> it's so like, it's a weird combination and I'm not saying, Oh, look at, no, seriously. I like, I love being extroverted. I love going out and just whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's a time then all of a sudden like my, everything wants to shut down. I just want to be by myself. I, I have to be alone. I do my own mm -hmm. thing right now. And that, and, uh, so I'm learning that. So sometimes this is great. Sometimes it's awesome. Other times, this is the like torture. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to, you have to be able to talk to to someone. Like for me right now, alone. You, you know, know the the interaction. You know, alone. So like you gotta like you can go cra crazy with it. Like four white walls. That's literally what I live in. You know, mm. like it's one room, one room and a bedroom. Mm. But. What I started doing, and I did that over the summer, like I, I started doing that last summer, but now I've been regular every day, writing, mm. writing about whatever. At yep. first, I, now I use my laptop, but at first I was using the pen. As soon as the pen touches the paper, I don't stop. At first I used to put a 30 minute timer. 70% mm. is nonsense, but mm. the pen can't stop. And there's a lot of, but there's stuff that comes out of it. Sometimes I think of something, I'm like, shit, like why, why don't I try that? Mm. I should put that together. Mm. You know, say, have, have a new project, have that as, as a new project. Mm. But it's like, it's like when you're talking to someone and you realize something as you're saying it, if you don't have anybody to talk to, then you're all those ideas that generate themselves while having a conversation are out the door. Yeah. I you can't know what, go though? to, you know, I think, so I, I, writing, go ahead. That, writing, it brings out those random thoughts and it, it makes you focus, like think. No, when's the last time that you actually sat down and you thought people don't think anymore this mm -hmm. good and that was the worst i would play 2k i'd have a podcast playing and then as soon as i pause 2k well, i'd have to be looking at something i always had to be active but i didn't i didn't let my mind race i let things entertain me but i never tried to like actually think and come up with stuff mm -hmm. and i started doing that and it's 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 crazy how you learn not only about yourself but learn new things have mm -hmm. good ideas not just in that nine to five cycle every day. You got to look around that. You got to look outside the box. Well, that's it. And I, I'm like, I'm trying to think of like, what am I going to do? How are we going to sort this out? Uh, and I, a lot of my mind has started racing big time and in, in a good way. Like, okay, I think in this, and what it used to be like, what you made this comment just, and I was like, you know, you're writing it down. You're like, you're writing, your ideas are staying on paper. I think, we're lazy when we tell other people our ideas. We hope that they'll kind of start the idea for us and then we'll kind of like jump yeah. in and say, okay, they tested the idea out and it's kind of working. So now I'm going to jump in because actually it was my idea. And then that's where the conflict yeah. is because you're like, well, you're like, you said that idea and I'm like, you didn't do anything. But now that you've done, you started, you know, like, sorry, let me say it again. So like you, you say the idea to your friend and then you don't, you personally don't do anything about it, but then your friend starts, you didn't own it. On the, they start owning the idea and you watch them kind of own it. Then you're like, you want to jump back in, but they're like, well, you didn't do anything with the idea. And so now you have this conflict from the jump. And I'm like, well, if I had just written that down, thought about it. And like, now I'm finally going back to things I've written down. Like I'm going back to yeah. all the stuff I wrote down. I'm like, well, I wrote that down. Dang. Okay. Okay. So how does that look? What does that, what does that mean? Um, I'm not ever just kind of looking through that. Like even this, like learning zoom, like that should have been done a long time ago. And I was yeah, forced yeah. to walk through that window. Like exactly. it's so much easier for me to do this from zoom. Cause I was like, Oh man, those guys are so lucky. They can, they can do podcasts with anybody. Cause they'll just come to them. But I'm like, what I'm like, what is the block that's missing for me to do a podcast with something? What I'm like, one, I need an interface Two, I need a microphone. And this is, a friend's microphone. He just gave it to me like a long time ago to let me borrow it. And he is now just we're quarantined, so I can't even give it back to him. I have to leave it at his house for like five days or whatever. But now I know what kind of microphone I'm gonna be looking for once I once this is done. I know what I'm doing. Um and so that's where we are. Um so like this whole like one of the things that's, like that's in in the Bible. Let me, I'll find the verse for you. Okay. Hold on, I gotta find that. 
Okay, maybe it's not in the Bible exactly like that, but I'll find it. Anyways, it just says that when, when a door is closed, like, like here, here, the, the, it's, in, it's a verse in Revelation. It says that any door that God closes, no man can open. And any, uh, and any door that God opens, no man can close. Okay. Hmm. So now these doors have all been closed. So the, obviously he opens another door. Okay. And nobody can close that door unless God closes that door. Um, and sometimes one of the colloquialisms in church is that if God closes the door, there's always a window. Or there's just, there's always another, like if there's something closed here, there might be another way, like that route to the, to, to your objective might be closed, but there might be another route to it that you just haven't been look, looking at because you've been another trying to go through one, this one door and this one door yeah. is just shut. Um, you know, lots of people think they're like meant for TV. I'm like, well, there's a thing called YouTube if you haven't figured it out and it'll tell you very quickly if you're meant yeah. for it or not. Like you don't have to wait to get all these people behind you to approve your opinion. You can build your clout. And that's what happened with all these advertisement agencies. Then they started taking their money out from TV and putting it to people like just in there. Like my friend makes money doing ads from face, from Instagram or whatever. I'm like, dang. And it makes like, it makes a serious living. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of these people. And they, they don't even have like, they're like, not like a million subscribers. And I got, I, I feel bad for one of my friends though, but keep going. Sorry. What we say? No, I was just going to say, like, some of these people on Instagram, it's crazy. It's, it's like a totally, it's weird to call it a career path, but some people definitely see it as a career path. For me, right. I don't know how sustainable it is. Not very. How long? Exactly. Because you eventually have to some develop. Some people, they're saying, like, that's almost their goal. But you have to develop, like, my friend is there, and now they have to develop their own contract. That they have, like, someone taking the in contract to the out contract, like, you know, follow up. I'm like, so you basically become your own agency. So these Marketing agencies did the same thing in the beginning. They just grew big. But mm -hmm. one thing we learned about big, ag big agencies, big gov whatever, big anything, is they're very slow and they're hard to turn. So you get a big truck, it's real hard to turn that thing, and it's slow getting out of the hole. Mm -hmm. You get a smaller and car, it turns real quick, and it can get out of the hole real quick. Like, and it takes less to, to manage. So that's one of those things. Um, one of my buddies is a, uh, he's got like a million, let's go check how many, how many subscribers he has on YouTube. I'm also, by the way, uh, Zach, I'm practicing all this stuff. So I'm learning how to do this. Oh I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. Learn it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, finders, podcast. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, Google Chrome. Does that work? That's what I want. Okay. So let's open this bigger so that, and I have to clean up my desktop 100%. Okay. So let's go YouTube. Okay, here's this. So I grew up down the street from this guy. You might have already seen one of his videos. All right, you still there? Sharing is paused. Yeah, yeah. I just don't see anything right now. Bring what it says. Sharing is paused. Bring your shared to the front. And I see you. Now you see me, but you didn't see the window or whatever. No. Okay, hold on, uh, Nick. So that just showed up. Nick Pro Parkour. Okay, let me try and share that with you now. Because maybe it was just being all weird because I clicked here. So I'm going to you, share my desktop with you. There, now you can see okay, my desktop. Yeah, now it works. Okay, yeah. Look how many subscribers this guy has. And last I, when I last checked, he's got 3.47. 3. Eh? Last time I checked, he had 1.2. Whoa, when was that? Oh, uh, I... Uh, was in December. So he just went on a big wow. jump all of a sudden. Okay. So this yeah. guy does all kinds of videos. He does like, he's a crazy parkour guy. He even like did a video where he woke up from uh, as like Mario or Luigi. He's done all the Fortnite movies. He takes movies and tries to do their flips legit. And not, like any CGI flip, he tries to do it himself. But see that, that, that's different. That, that is like, like that's gotta be your lifestyle if you're doing that, you know, that's his lifestyle. But right. there's some you where I have a problem with influencers is there's some that what they're doing isn't isn't really them. You know, they're 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 appealing to like let's be honest, look, all those girls, yep. a lot of girls that you know only take uh, pictures with their butts out, Roxanne, you know, those types of girls. That's not your life. That's just I don't know who life. Roxanne is. It's when everyone know I don't Roxanne's know. Roxanne's a song. Roxanne's oh, a song. Okay, okay, the song. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roxanne says, that one. Yeah, rock. No, not. There's a new Roxanne. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna listen yeah, to it. Roxanne, all she wanna do is party all night. 
rocks and okay. at some point he says uh like something in in a sense that never takes a picture without her butt out or something okay yeah yeah but anyway so to, to all the rock sands in the world that's not that's not the real life they're fake it's not real so it's not sustainable no especially so since like friend, that's a, that's his lifestyle whatever yeah. happens after this it's still going to be related to his, he might not be able to I don't know. I'm guessing parkour is jumping off buildings and doing a bunch of stuff. There's no way he's going to be able to do that all his life. You're going to mash Exactly. But because it's his lifestyle, now he has a voice. He has that, that, that entertainment platform. Mm-hmm. Well, then he's going to find something else that's still related to the same market, the same lifestyle, because that's his lifestyle. But once your body goes away, like you can, you can put whatever you want in it, but there's mm-hmm. a time where it's not, it's not going to be uh, on everybody's Instagram. Not everybody's going to want to see that. No, like when I see a 60-year-old that's in shape, they look like they're 60 that's in shape. See what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like age is something that's going to happen to all of us. Like I'm getting older, like I know it, but I refuse to let my body be that way in the sense that like I'm always working out, I'm always training. Like our, uh, we were lucky that our CrossFit gym, my wife's CrossFit gym close by, um, they got ahead of the curve before like all the stores had to close, like legit like the day before. And so they took in orders. You could rent their equipment during the time, this time. So we took it, really? just, yeah, we disinfected everything, whatever. And then so I, I got a bar. They were supposed to give me 205 pounds, but they gave me 185 pounds, jerks. But it is what it is. Still, uh, yeah. But I have a bar. Like, I don't care. Like, at least that's what yeah. I got. So, because I was getting tired of doing burpees in my house. Um, I've been hitting up, uh, there's a YMCA, a kilometer away from my place. So I okay. started running. Okay. So I wake up and I do this all this before work. Because after work, I just want to relax. I just want to chill. Yeah. So 5.55, I'm out the door. I jog one kilometer, takes me about five minutes. I get to the YMCA and outdoor, there's like those outdoor gyms. So okay. there's pull-up bars, dip bars, all types of different heights and whatever. So I just go there full calisthenics for like 35 minutes, but intense. Run back, get in the house. Abs, 45 minutes. I have my full workout. I go shower and I'm ready for work. Come on. But if I had bars, that's, that's clutch because you can switch it up. I've been doing the same thing. Like I'm trying to get creative. Yeah, but it's, it's hard, man. So it's yeah, but you gotta find you gotta find a way to make it work. Yeah, you, you can't get, just sit down and not do anything. No, get yourself a kettlebell. You get yourself two kettle. You need three kettles. You need two that There's are the same. Crazy kettlebell workout. Well, they just they can do so much with it, right? It's a heavy object, mm-hmm. which is essentially all of lifting. And you don't even need that heavy. Have I have a, a kettlebell workout. Yeah, I got a thirty-five kilo, a uh, thirty-five pound, and a twenty-five pound kettlebell. They will do all kinds of stuff. I just want to, like, I'm just, I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to say this, but I'm saying it. I'm a strong dude, okay? I may not look tall. <laughs> I may not look that strong, but I'm legitimately strong. So, uh, I could, uh, after a while, 35 kilo pounds is just, I need more. Just need a little more juice. So, yeah. then when this opportunity came up, I took it. But, yeah, like, I see, back to this, like, whole, like, social media thing. For real, though. Like, these people are, and, like, any influencer, like, are they a sustainable influencer? Cause you see, like you see, if it's, of- if it's your lifestyle, if it's real, if it's fake and you're appealing to what you think they want, oh, that's you not, sustainable. You, no, not sustainable. Not sustainable. sustainable. No. And then you have like people, um, what's it called? Um, you have, what I find is you have either people who are sustainable, like from their lifestyle, that's what they do. Then you have mm-hmm. also the influencer. That's a business model. They understand business and they, they don't understand yeah. business, like, like they're like a business guru, but they have this, this sense to build something. Like there's a guy called, uh, here's a, let's pull him up and see the screen share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Show him up here. Okay. That worked. Okay. Uh, here we go. He is the biggest skateboard, um, brand, a business apparently now from YouTube only. Okay. Here it is. Skateboard brand from yeah. So here's their main channel is 4.6 million subscribers. Okay. They teach skateboarding and they, their whole objective is to make skateboarding videos and to learn how to skateboard. So that was their thing. And they had some pretty clutch like style of videos that just caught on or whatever. So like one of their okay, things. They teach was, you how to skateboard. How to skateboard. They don't make skateboards. No. Oh, they, they do now. They have that. Like they built their company oh, okay. up. Right. But like, see, like he has like millions of views on, you know, he's hitting half a million on all of his, uh, his, uh, views. And he's like, he never judged anybody like because they did something else or were a little different in skateboarding because skateboarding can be very like, but anyways, this guy built this company up. Okay. And then he has like other versions of Braille. Like, so there's 
he's got like a gaming channel. He's got another channel for something else, something else. And he's got guys oh, hired really? to do, they do like, they sit down and do meetings on, on all the videos they're going to produce that week. And then they, and they take a whole day to plan all of their videos and then they make their videos. So that's a business to me. That's a business model guy. Yeah. Well, see, you see how, why that works is because even if there weren't cameras or anything around it, he'd probably still be doing that. Yeah, for sure he'd be skateboarding. You and he know? just so he he be doing lanes. that. Exactly. So like the, the cameras are just okay, let me show people what I'm doing, but he's not doing it for the camera. No. The camera is just showing everybody what he's doing. Yeah. You know, but he doesn't need he didn't need all that to get into skateboarding, to learn how to skateboard, want to teach people how to do skateboarding. It's just now he he got on a different platform so people see it. Mm. But so if it's your life again, it's a life, so that's why it's gonna work. Because it's just him doing his thing. Yeah. But now everybody's watching him and they find that entertaining. They find it to help them to do skateboard or whatever the, the, the other videos are. Yeah. No, for, for sure. the other platforms. So like it's that's yeah. like for me, that's how I see the difference. If it's if you're doing it for the camera, not sustainable. I'm no, not, not saying it's not gonna work, but it's not sustainable. Well it might work and short term, can... but long term it's not gonna be. And then exactly. you're gonna feel yourself asking that same question. Okay, you know I was doing that, but that's not what I want to do because it didn't give you fulfillment. Exactly. You're gonna get exhausted. Payment fulfillment are not the same thing. Woo, that'll exactly. preach. That'll preach. I wanted to put up make a video about that. I've been making videos called Life Lessons. And I haven't I haven't let any of them air yet, but they're gonna all start airing because I'm getting everything in order right now. That was one of the things that this has allowed me to do is like actually create there you go. content. And my my biggest thing is my voice that's not yeah. what i'm doing it's my voice and i do lots of things but then i'm always like ob ob like observing what i'm doing or observing what other people are doing and say how do i take that in i mean and then like and then you use that either to help somebody i'm not trying to be like a guru of teaching people life but it's just here's what i learned this is like everything i'm telling other people is stuff that i learned and i'm like crap i gotta eat. and i might, might not even be implementing it well in my own life i'm just trying I'm like that's i know what i need to be doing i'm just not good at it I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Maybe help me out. Or I see you're coming out of this. You're going to, you, you, you're using this time. You're going to get something out of this quarantine. Well, you know? I was just, I was That's the biggest thing like about this. Jobs, man. Too many jobs. I got to have focus. I got to figure out doing the same thing. So yeah, man. Okay. Listen, Zach, you know, yeah. we're going to cut this one short now. This is good combo. I, I don't want to burn your brain. Cause I definitely, I'm going to give you a, what I've been doing for people who I've done podcasts with so far. They get a, they get a rating. Okay. So you get a rating. So my friend Craig, he's got a rating right there. You can see that, Craig. He's got. Yeah, I, yeah. I use the uh, the NCAA recruiting, and that is a that's a five, and that says star. Okay, okay, five star. You, my friend, are getting a five star. There you are, Zach Graveson. Hey. Five star. Oh. That means it's a re-ask. So we'll we'll set that top up, buddy. Five, top five. Top five. Yeah. How about we uh, just reconvene uh, next week, next Sunday? Hey, sounds good. I'm All right, here, bud. Man. Let's do it up. I'll put you, I'm not, I haven't figured that out yet, but I got to find a way how to send this out to people and uh, right. get that on. So that's rolling. And then this will go up on YouTube. I'm trying to get my YouTube subscribe description up to like a thousand so I can, cause you can't, you can't stream from your phone and I want to stream from my phone. Straight to YouTube. Straight to YouTube. Like live, like not live, but actually I'm not even doing these live anymore. What am I talking about? So see, that's already been cut off. I'm a liar. Don't even need it. Good. <laughs> All right, bud. All right, man. Take care. Yo, be blessed. Do your thing. Yeah, everybody stay out there, stay home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay <laughs> home. Do your part. Everybody, this has been Zach Graveson. Give him a round of applause where you're at your home, and we'll catch you on a flip. All right, hold on. Let me turn this off. Give me a second. Turn the recording off. Stop.